Morning, everyone. Welcome to our midweek service, a moment of silence. We meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father, but we have turned aside from your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is a light on our path, but we have walked in the darkness of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life, but we have not listened to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the collect for today. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus Christ, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things restored in him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 2, reading from verses 1. When he had returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four men. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their heart, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing this questioning among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Stand up. Take your mat and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic man, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Forgiveness of sins and the healing of the paralytic man. 
there are four groups of people in the reading we've just had. Jesus and his disciples, the crowd, the paralytic man and his friends, and finally, the scribes who were also teachers of the law. Each group have their functionality so let's take a look at them closely. Jesus and his disciples. Jesus returned to Capernaum. He entered the city privately, but his popularity has gone before him and so great that people rush to hear him speak. So Jesus sat at home and he preached the word unto them with the crowd gathered around him. The crowd then, the crowd made it impossible to bring the paralyzed man close to Jesus. Successful churches or busy Christians can be obvious to the people in need who want to assess Jesus. But in some churches, if the crowd is too thick and not interested in people who wants to turn their life to God, the person may simply wander away. It is sad when people in churches are so preoccupied with their own relationships and agendas that they fail to recognize those who wants to give their life to Jesus. This should never happen. When people come to church or meet Christians, they should see the love of God reflected in our faces and in our lifestyle and our hands extended to greet them and make it possible to meet Jesus. The paralytic man and his friends, the needs of the paralytic man moved his friends to action and they brought him to Jesus. When you notice someone in need, do you act? Do you do something about it? Many people have physical or spiritual need. We must do our best to help them either by ourselves or with others who are concerned. These friends were deeply concerned about their friend and wanted to help him. They had the faith to believe that Jesus could and would meet his need. They did not simply pray about it, but they put some feet into their prayers and they did not permit the difficult circumstances to discourage them. They worked together and dared to do something different. And Jesus rewarded their efforts. Human need moved these four men to action. We should follow in their examples to be compassionate in our actions. The scribes and the teachers of the law. The teachers of the law were in perfect position, sitting where they could observe and criticize. There are a lot of Christians in churches who are like the scribes. When in church, this is how they think. Is the music too fast or too loud? Is the sermon too short or too long? Do people irritate or annoy you by sitting in your pew or dressing too casually? How much time do we spend in church? worshiping and how much time do we spend in church complaining 
and criticize it. Christians should work on activism, the kind that involves working with fellow believers towards real progress on common objectives, such as sharing the gospel, helping the needy, and building strong and caring disciples of Christ. The question is, are we criticizing the church and her leaders, or are we changing the world? This narrative is a great example of how God can work through faith and determination of one person or a group of people to bring healing and spiritual salvation to another person. Amen. Let's respond to the sermon by saying the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministry of your church. We pray for the church worldwide and we bring before you the Church of England. We pray for St. Lawrence and all saints and the ministry in this community. We bring before you all bishops, archdeacons, priests and deacons. And we pray for the clergy here. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayers. We bring before you your world. We pray for the nations of the world. We pray for areas where there is crisis, where there is war. We bring before you America, where there have been a collapse of the blocks of flats. We pray for people who have died and their families. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. We bring before you the United Kingdom and her leaders. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen and her family. We pray for our Prime Minister and his cabinet. We pray for all members of Parliament and we remember today our own members of Parliament here in Southend. Lord, in your mercy, wow. hear our prayers. We pray for the NHS and all who work in them, for consultants, doctors, nurses and volunteers. Lord, in your mercy, wow. hear our prayers. We bring before you the sick and the dying. And so we pray today for Monica, Lindsay, Andrew, Julia, Georgette, Janet and John, Lucy and Jake. We pray for Judy and Maggie. Lord, in your mercy, wow. hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for life. We pray for ourselves and our friends and our families. Enable us by your spirit to live in love for you and for one another. And so surrounded with all the prayers of the saints, we commend the whole human family into your loving care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? Jesus Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace by waving. <laughs> The Lord is here. 
His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and that with all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly guides her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turn away and rebel, your love remains steadfast. From them you raise up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. Taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercede for us at your right hand. Pour out your spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. And bring us at last with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Almighty Father, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's presence with us now, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, 
have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Friends, thank you for coming. We come to the end of our service. Would you please stand for a blessing? May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.